the Cardiac Rays have done their fair share of celebrating with three walk-off wins in their last six games. Tonight in Toronto, they have a chance to pop champagne for the first time since 2013 and return to the postseason. The Rays will send right-hander Tyler Glass now to the hill, looking to set the tone early and lead his team to a fourth consecutive victory. We welcome you to Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Tonight, the wrap-up game, wrap-up series of the regular season. First game of this series, the Rays and the Blue Jays square off from Rogers Center. Well, hi again, everyone, and welcome to an evening of Rays baseball with Brian Anderson, Dwayne Stats. Great to have you aboard. We'll hear from Tricia Whitaker throughout the evening as well. Well, the hunt for the postseason continues for the Rays. And the way the magic number is set up, it could happen tonight. They need a raise win and a loss elsewhere, and they would be in the postseason. So here we go. That's right. You know, the first things first, though, the Rays, they control their own destiny. And so that's the one thing that you love about the position that they're in now with that really bad loss. You talking about bad losses here recently. The Cleveland Indians, the last two games in Chicago, we said going in there that Chicago has given them trouble all season long. They shut them out last night. And so that's how it sets up right now. The Rays take care of business tonight. That would drop their magic number, which is two right now, down to one. Combine that with an Indians loss, and they could be celebrating. Interesting thing about that, the Cleveland Indians, you wonder how much fight they have left in them with after that game last night where they got shut up by the White Sox. And they go into Washington to play a national team that they need to continue to win if they want to maintain home field advantage in their wild card game. So you've got a motivated national team and maybe uh, an Indian team that's running on fumes. And for good measure, the Rays will have Tyler Glasnow on the hill tonight to start slash open this game. They're hoping to get maybe four, maybe a little more out of him tonight. That would be very nice. And I'll tell you something right now. When you think about games like this, what you want more than anything else is to get off to a quick start. And Tyler Glass now certainly has the ability to do that. You look what he has done since he has come back off the IL. Three starts have covered eight innings. He's made one mistake, and that was a two-run homer by Randall Gritchick, ironically enough, who he will see here tonight. But outside of that, he has been beyond dominant. All you need to do, look at the innings pitch look at the strikeouts he is going to be amped up tonight expect a great one from him and when you look at his body of work for the year he's been out there 11 times for the Rays nine of those times the Rays have come away with a win Rays and the Blue Jays coming up And Toronto. First game of this series. The Rays trying to take care of business tonight. The focus will be on Tyler Glass now at the outset. Rays are 12 and 4 against the Blue Jays this year. And here is the starting lineup presented by your local Ford dealers. Joey Wendell set to lead off, followed by Austin Meadows and Tommy Pham. Brandon Lau hits cleanup at second. Travis Darnot hits fifth. Followed by Nate Lowe with Abby Garcia, Kevin Kiermeyer, and Willie Adamas rounding out the lineup for Kevin Cash. Well, taking the mound tonight for the Toronto Blue Jays is going to be right-hander T.J. Zoik making his third start of the season. One and one record, ERA just over four and a half. Six feet, seven inches tall. Wants to work down in the zone, keep the ball on the ground. First pitch, and Wendell takes a fastball a little wide. One ball, no strikes. Wendell in that leadoff spot, hitting 234. Homer out of the leadoff spot in the game Wednesday. 
against the Yankees. Well, that will not be easy to do against Zoic. You saw that he has given up just one home run in 17 and two-thirds innings here at the big league level. Didn't give him any more up in the minors either. That pitch is wide, 3-0. and oh. yeah, There's Wendell on Wednesday connecting and hitting that one out to center field of the right-hander Loisica. And there is ball four, a four-pitch walk and Wendell is aboard. You can see those sinkers just having trouble keeping them really anywhere near the plate. And so a leadoff base runner here and the Rays in business. And like we talked about in the open from the pitching side of things, games like this, you want to get off to a quick start. Leave no doubt. Now Austin Meadows. And Meadows has enjoyed the matchup here in the season series against Toronto. First pitch is a strike. Tonight's jackpot brought to you by the Florida Lottery. And to this end, Meadows at 446 against Blue Jays pitching. Seven home runs and 16 runs batted in in 16 games. Boy, and that includes one to the fifth deck here in right field. And I love, Dwayne, I love what Kevin Cash has done with the lineup here tonight. You know, you think about Brandon Lau and where the strength of his swing is. Well, you get him, you know, this sinker baller. You get him into the four spot. You get Nate Lowe in there. He's got that swing path where that ball down in the zone, he can get down there, lift it with power. That's a strike, says Lance Diaz. Now it's one and two. Meadows stepping back to maybe readjust his sights a little bit. This is a guy that if you're going to try to pull, it's going to be difficult. That type of sinking action, even right there, the changeup mimics that fastball. Two and two. And working on trying to make his slider look very, you know, similar, same tunneling as the sinker, and one goes one way, one goes the other. High hopes for Zoik. It's fouled back. Fastball away. It appeared to be well off the plate, but Meadows not taking any chances. No, it, it, that borderline call that went against him, that will heighten the senses. And on top of that, you know, Zoik is able to keep that sinker in the zone for a long time before it takes off. A lot of late action on his fastball. Ground ball foul. Zoic out of Mason, Ohio. He was a first round pick in the 2016 draft out of the University of Pittsburgh. Foul right back again. So this extends the at bat. The eighth pitch will be forthcoming. And I'll tell you what, when, when Zoic is up in the zone like that, those are the pitches you got to capitalize on. Because as you saw, when they're up, they flatten out and, and they stay almost same plane. Good hitting. He wants everything down there in the bottom third. Now the count is full. The four pitch walk to Wendell. Now a full count here to Meadows. I guess the only question here do you put Wendell in motion? Rays do just that. The pitch is foul, lifted out of play to the left side. And we'll redo that. Yeah, and, and you kind of figure they would. Couple of reasons. Number one, you want to stay out of the double play, and Zoic certainly is able to get those with the amount of ground balls he gets. And number two, Austin Meadows swinging the bat so well right now, you trust him. Trust him to get the job done, to get the ball in play, or take the walk. Well, a great month of September so far. Over 400. And he 
fouls this one. So the battle continues. And back to first goes Wendell again. So it's a 10 pitch at bat right now. goes and the pitch is skied deep to center. Hernandez will go back just in front of the track making the catch and Wendell returns to first. Well, One away on that drive. Let's take a look at the Blue Jay defense and see how they're going to line up here tonight brought to you by Gold and Diamond Source and in that outfield left to right a little bit different look for the Blue Jays with Derek Fisher, Teoscar Hernandez and Billy McKinney and then across that infield third to first. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Richard Urania, Bo, no Bo Bichette probably for the series, Kevin Biggio and Rowdy Telez with Reese McGuire behind the plate. And back over to first, Wendell back to the bag. Well, Tommy Pham DHing. 20 20 year, 20 homers, picking up 23 runs batted in, or 23 stolen bases. 66 runs batted in for him. And he takes a strike. Fastball off the plate in. It's one and one. And you could see, you know, a lot of times you see, especially a right-handed pitcher, starter, six feet, seven inches tall, you're going to see guys line up and try to run on him time after time after time. See how quick he is at the plate, though? No attempts yet. I know it's only been sitting now 18 innings in the major leagues. No attempts at the stolen base, and that's because with all that size, he can get it started and get to home plate quickly. Ground ball third, backhanded. Guerrero will go to second one. First bait is wide there. Bam reaches on a fielder's choice. Guerrero got his glove on it to start the play and force Wendell in second. Well, this ball was sharply hit by Pham. That breaking ball got ripped, and then a nice job by Guerrero Jr. to get it to second base. Not good enough to get Pham at first. I'll tell you, you, you watch these double plays turn now, and because of the new slide rule, you know, Kevin Biggio right there taking that throw from Guerrero Jr. I mean, if this is the old days, Joey Wendell could have put him out into shallow left field. Can't do that anymore. Can't do that. <laughs> Hear that all the time. <laughs> Pitch is upstairs to Brandon Lau. Well, here's that matchup you mentioned. Yeah, Lau. Does against the right-hander Zoic. Yeah, his ground ball rate is almost 51% so far. Uh, one and one. Right, you, you talk to the, the the people around the Blue Jays, and and they think that T.J. Zoic has a a real good chance to be a staple for them. You know, a, a different style of pitcher, tall, working downhill. And they said when he's going good, you're going to see ground ball after ground ball after ground ball. Two balls and a strike to count. And, and that's why, really, when we were talking about Brandon Lau and Nate Lowe, and, you know, they're going to be in the lineup a lot of times anyway, but Nate Lowe has that perfect swing path for a sinker ball guy. Same thing with Brandon Lau. That's a shot into right field. McKinney back, however, and he runs it down near the 375 marker to retire the side. Bottom of the first coming, no score. Rays leave a man in the first. We go to the bottom of the inning. Lineup for Toronto brought to you by your local Ford dealers as Billy McKinney leading off and then Kevin Vigio in the second spot in front of Randall Gritchick, the DH tonight. Rowdy Tellez hits cleanup. Vlad Guerrero Jr. in third base follows. And then the catcher, Reese McGuire. 
Number seven is Teoscar Hernandez. Richard Urania is the shortstop, and Derek Fisher in left, hitting ninth. Well, Tyler Glass now, his fourth start since coming off of the IL. His last two basically carbon copies of each other. Three innings, a couple of hits, no runs, a lot of strikeouts, 51 and 52 pitches respectively. And McKinney goes after the pitch and fouls it, strike one. Yeah, we keep our eye on what you were talking about in the open, about how deep, how much deeper. Because we thought last time, coming off of 3 and 51, could you get him to 4 and maybe 60, 65? And instead, it was another 3, this time at, at 52. The foul ball. That's Glass now up at the count, 0-2. Oh, you, you think about with Glass now coming back, and, and look at that line, look at, at this number. Right there to go along <laughs> seven punch outs, three innings, making it look too easy. But think of all the possibilities with Snell and Glass now and being able to piggyback guys. And a cut and a miss, so he comes right after McKinney, got him down 0 2 and strikes him out. Watch how quickly this curveball gets down. I mean, that right there is not fair. That ball is up at the letters, and then it's to the dirt before you can. Well, two things with both the fastball and the curveball. Number one, he's right on top of you with his release, and then the depth of that curveball really makes it unhittable. Well, it's, and it's his, it's his release point. I mean, he's an over-the-top guy, so he can have. See how Lee comes right over the top? I mean, you know, they, as tall as he is with his kind of reach coming from that arm angle up top, that's a true 12 6 curveball. 99 up out of the zone to Biggio. And he's up there again this time, 96. It's 2 0. I mean, really, at the end of the day, guys, a lot of guys just aren't tall enough to create that kind of depth. Three straight pitches up out of the zone now. So Biggio ahead in the count. And of all of the young hitters in this lineup, he has shown the ability to work counts and draw walks. These pitches have not been close, but that's one of the big parts of his game. And he walks on four pitches right here. the Toyota inside look and here's that breakdown on the extension we were talking about with glass now I mean on his four seam fastball he releases the ball closer to home plate than any pitcher in Major League Baseball you look at Colin Poche at seven feet that's where he gets a lot of his deception too but glass now it pretty incredible but you know what, what is he six eight six nine I mean he is a mammoth human being tall wiry working downhill Grichik takes that one in the dirt. Vigio reaching safely now in 27 consecutive games with that walk. Dwayne, it really does appear to the hitter as if he is handing the ball to Darno. <laughs> yeah, isn't that, it amazing? <laughs> it really. That's a strike. You know, it reminds me of years ago when J.R. Richard was like that. Big, strong, tall, mm -hmm. lanky, and with that fastball and that slider, every pitch was right on top of the hitter. Runner goes, good jump. Pitch is a strike, and the throw will not be in time. Vigil stays perfect in the stolen base department, 14 to 14. He got a very good jump. Well, opposing base dealers coming in were seven out of nine against Tyler Glass now in limited innings, and he got a great jump with a high leg kick. And I'll tell you, Biggio knows how to pick his spots, too. You look at his stolen bases, 14 out of 14 now. Has not been thrown out, and that's all about understanding times. You know, the pitcher's time to the plate, my time to second, catcher's pop time to second. If the math works, you go. The pitch is down. Well, it turns out to be a double. You walk him on four pitches, he steals second. He's right there now in scoring position with one out.
2 2 to Gretchen. He leads this team in home runs and runs batted in. Both his hits of well, Glass now have been home runs in his career. But he is out on strikes this time. That was nice and easy 98 in to get him. And, and, and wait till you see the swing because of that. that. That's the whole key. The pitch is in, and Gritchett gets tied up with the swing. I mean, just an awkward swing right there. That had everything to do with the pitch location. Well, two outs with a runner at second. Rowdy Tellez, the first baseman. Twenty one home runs for Tellez. Pitch is upstairs. He has two home runs off glass now. Made an impressive. Debut here with this Toronto ball club. Oh, one and one. Ball that will be fair. Nate Lowe takes care of that unassisted. A walk, two strikeouts, and a man left. No score on to the second. We go to the second inning. Reserve your 2020 race season tickets today. Secure the best seat locations, concessions, and merchandise discounts, and access to exclusive events all season. Plus, Get access to 2019 postseason tickets. Visit RaysBaseball.com slash season tickets. Travis Jarno will open the second inning. Jarno with 16 home runs to begin play tonight. Takes the pitch for a strike. Well, a lot could happen tonight. The Rays could clinch a spot in the uh, wild card game with a win tonight. And an Indians loss. There's a fly ball into left. Fisher's there to make the catch for one out. So that's one thing that could happen tonight. And they could do no worse than a game 163 tiebreaker with either a win tonight or a Cleveland loss. Well, they're, they're, they're two games up on the Indians. Magic number is two, so you get that down to one. At that point, the best Cleveland could do was tie you. They'd have to win out. You'd have to lose Saturday and Sunday if you're the Rays, and then you'd be in the, the game 163. So the Rays have put themselves not only in good position, but Cleveland has helped them out with those losses in their last two games. And, and that's the best we can do to simplify things. 1-0 pitch and low shoots it the other way into left for a base hit. So Nate Lowe is aboard the International Diamond Center standing tracker. As you see it right now, Oakland up by a game. Easy enough to deduce. Cleveland two back. There are 64 different possible combinations involving the A's, the Rays, and the Indians. Wins and losses this weekend. But uh, it's beyond us to break that out, and, and you wouldn't even want us to try. But they're po can you believe that? 64 possible combinations this weekend. Yeah, I, I'll leave that up to the uh, to the fifth floor and, and <laughs> you know the computers and, and and all of that. It doesn't seem as if it should be that complicated with three games left. But yeah, there, there's a lot that can happen. The good thing is, is the Rays. Listen, it's all about winning. You go out and win, you're in. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the simplest way to make your way through a series and where the Rays are right now. Just go win today. That's it. That's it. You win tomorrow, and then regardless of what anybody else is doing, you have clinched a spot. Now, you, you wonder about catching Oakland. Oakland just a game in front 
uh, of the Rays, but they would have to actually be better than them by two games over the course of the weekend because Oakland has the tie break. Yep. So that that's probably a long shot at this point. But you never know. That's why you play them. That's one of those 64 different possibilities. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's why uh, if you're the manager, it's Kevin Cash, and you've got a team like this, uh, your focus is on the game and winning that game that day. It all comes down to that. See a behind in the count, one and two. I think the one thing, though, that, that really has been, since we last talked, which, which was Wednesday, has been pushed to the kind of the back burner is our, our, our hope for that three-game or the three-team A, B, and C. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everybody well. tied up. Probably not going to happen. Yeah. I, I, that discussion we had about the option A, B, and C, that prevents us from going anywhere near the 64 different combinations <laughs> that exist going into this series. Garcia out on strikes. First strikeout for the Toronto right-hander. Two well, gone I, with low at first. You know, I, what I will tell you, and, and this is that, that little breaking ball that just kind of hung there. And, and again, when, when Zoik is up in the zone, whether it be with that sinker that stays up and flattens out or the breaking ball, which is going to be a spinner, those are the pitches that you got to capitalize on. And as this game moves on, we'll see if the Rays are able to do that. But I think that you were probably last night as surprised as I was in seeing the lack of life from yep. the Cleveland Indians. Yeah, against the White Sox. They got taken apart in that now, game. I tell you, they got down and it was like, see you later. Yeah, that bad, bad body language. And, and, and Chicago just continued to add on as the game went on. And that's why we said in the open, you wonder how much fight that team has left. Lost the last two games in Chicago being outscored 16 to 3 and then head into Washington to play a national team that is looking to continue to win so they can hold on to wild card number one. You know, Washington playing for positioning there. Now Kiermaier ahead in the count 3 and 0. Oh. Low at first with a base hit. He's had a runner in the first left a man on. Willie Adama is getting ready in case he's going to swing the bat in the second inning. And he will. Ball four on four pitches. Kiermaier heads to first, pushing low up to second. And now Willie Adama steps in against Zoic. Well, let's take a look at the scouting report here, Dwayne, on, on Willie. Brought to you by Auto Nation. Number one, steady growth. And we've talked about it a lot. It has been fun to watch from beginning of season until the point we're at right now, watching the growth of Willie Adamas as a player, as a person in the box, out in the field. It has been really fun. And back of the bus. What we mean by that, and it's kind of what you have alluded to here in that last homestand, how much he loves being at the back of the bus and hitting in the nine hole. The number's outstanding for him in this position. And Kevin Cash just continues I'll be at one game, a blip where he put him up in the eight hole. Keeps him right there. Yeah, well, he learned his lesson. He's back hitting ninth now. And <laughs> take a look at this. He's got 20 home runs overall. And out of the number nine spot, he's hitting 327 with 11 homers and an on base percentage of over 400. How about that? I, I mean, what a threat at the bottom of your lineup. He's like a power hitting leadoff man batting ninth. Mm -hmm. You just hide him down there, and he's comfortable. You know, a lot of guys, they don't like, you know, listen, you're hitting ninth. There are going to be nights where you don't take your first at bat till the third inning. And he's perfectly fine. I'm going to do my thing, and I'm going to be someone that is going to be tough to deal with down at the bottom of the order. It's been one of the impressive things about him because in the time he's been with the Rays, it's been a growing and learning experience. Down on the count now, one and two. Not always successful, but he has never been guilty of a lack of effort. He's concentrated on getting better, and you know what? He has gotten better. Mm -hmm. He's a solid player right now, defensively and with the bat. Fouls it beyond Rodney Linares, still one and two. Yeah, Adamas actually has been, I, I think, one of the uh, fun guys to watch because of the progress he's made. 
mean, it wasn't a sure thing. I, people, you can look at the potential figure. He's a pretty good young infielder. He's going to be around for a while, but he's, he's got to establish that in the major leagues, and he's gone a long way toward doing that now. But, and that's not something that's easy to see uh, over the course of a, a full season. You know, you, you, you'll see guys make a jump from one year to the next, but to see him make a jump during the course of a season, it, it, it's rare. And, and, and for Willie, it stood out. You've seen it. Yeah. You've watched the development happen. And I know it's a long season, 162 games, but that's really one of the fun things about this game. You can see a player develop from day to day and over a period of time. That's why it's been so much fun to watch the progress Willie Adamas has made. Battling here, bounce it right back into the screen. Two men on, two men out. Well, the Rays have pushed Zoic's pitch count to over 40 now. So they're doing a good job with that. Yeah, I was going to say, those are like body blows. You know, body blow, body blow, get runners on base, higher leverage pitches, and just wear a pitcher down. And a good take there on a pitch in. Fairly close, and the count is full. That ball is going to stay up, and it's caught by McKinney. McKinney is sliding grab. That ball started to sink on him, and he made the catch. No score. Well, Dwayne, for the big story, let's head down to the nation's capital where Gerardo Parra getting it started here for the Nationals. That shot out, one hop in the wall down into right center field off of right-hander Zach Plesak. And that's going to plate a couple of runs there for the Nationals. They get the early jump. Keep your eye on this one. That may, that may be, uh, well, you, you could see, too, the, the, the look on Zach Plesak's face. I just that, That's been the look of the Indians over the last couple of days. This could be it. Well, here is Vlad Jr. Guerrero Jr. falling to a wanted one count there, taking that pitch for a strike. And on the outside corner, 97, one and two. Well, Rays fans are also Nationals fans tonight. The Nationals can give the Rays a little help and see if the Rays can take care of business here. Inside, 98. Boy, that ball gets here in a hurry. Two to the count to Guerrero Jr. Out to second, and Brandon Lau takes care of it. One gone. Now the calendar turns, and the action ramps up. Baseball's brightest young stars take center stage. The Major League Baseball postseason begins October 1st. Go to MLB.com slash postseason for the full schedule. Reese McGuire. He bounces this one to first. Nate Low unassisted. First pitch, and that's out number two. I'll tell you what, you want to get Tyler Glass now a little deeper into the game. Starts like this, don't hurt. Two quick outs for the Rays righty. And you kind of figure, too, you know, this Blue Jay team, young team, a lot of young players. I mean, they lead the world in rookies that have, you know, played in a, in a ball game this year, trying to figure out who's going to be a part of the future. Young hitters tend to be very aggressive hitters. And on top of that, no one wants to get to two strikes against Glass now. So you would expect if he's around the zone, they're going to be swinging the bat early and often. If he bounces pitches, there, there you get your takes. Maybe not that one. <laughs> Maybe not that one. 
1 0 to Teoscar Hernandez, although Hernandez has been known to uh, chase a pitch or two. He struck out 152 times this year. So he's up there to swing the bat. But not that one on the corner at 96. And it's one and one. I mean, what are you going to do with it? I mean, if you dive out across the plate, maybe you could shoot it the other way. But that's not what Hernandez is thinking about early in counts. He's looking, trying to pull for power. Two and one. Ray's coming in, 95 and 64. Toronto, 65 and 94. Three and one. And in regard to uh, the approach by Hernandez that you referenced particularly early, uh, that's pretty much been the Blue Jays' approach. Or they do have some people who can walk, but they like to swing the bat hunting the long ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, 243 home runs this year. Yeah, and, and then you look at, uh, you know, their strikeouts. They're in the, the, the top third of the league in strikeouts. Now, over Bottom 53% third in, of their runs have come on home runs. Yeah, well, that, that they really are as close to a all-or-nothing type team that you're going to find. They don't run a ton. You know, Biggio le leads the way. He hasn't even been here all year. Yep. He's got 14 stolen bases. And they don't manufacture runs. You know, they, they, they're not a running team. They're not a big hit and run, hit behind it. A lot of young hitters, again, they're aggressive early in the count. They run into some home runs, but they ring up some strikeouts and have trouble building innings. Gerania, the shortstop. It's way high. Ball, no strikes. It will be interesting to see how this Toronto club shakes out. You know, here's a first year Charlie Montoyo's been up here. He's doing a lot of evaluating. They run a lot of players, pitchers through here to try to get a read on. Runner goes, pitch a swing and a miss, and that ball pops out of Darno's hand. And Hernandez is in with his fifth stolen base. He's five of eight. So that's one thing the Blue Jays have shown. They're going to try to take advantage of Glass now. Yeah, they, they don't run a ton, but it's all about matchups. And Toronto, they feel like they've got a good one here with Glass now on the mound and the time that it takes his six foot eight inch frame. You know, we talked about how quick Zoik is to the plate at six seven. Glass now a little bit longer with that higher leg kick. It's on the edge. Says Laz Diaz, and it's one and two. You know, you also look at a guy like Glass and say, yeah, maybe we could pop a home run off of him, but it's going to be tough to build an inning against him, put together two, three, four hits in an inning. So when we get opportunities, let's run. Let's run and see if we can't create something. Upstairs, two and two. He's walked two tonight, but coming into this game all season, he had walked only 12 while striking out 72 coming into this. Yeah, and, and that could be Dwayne this game, what's it mean for the Rays? And how amped is Glass now? He already pitches with a lot of emotion. And he did not go. Ball pops away. Runner trying to advance. And safely in at third, Hernandez. Well, an appeal down there to the third base umpire. Jeff Nelson says, nope, he held up. So the count's going to be full. And Hernandez winds up going into third safely. On the breaking ball right here, they wanted to get him out maybe on the check swing. And then Darno recognizing a little bit late that Hernandez was off and running, couldn't get it there in time. They're going to score that a wild pitch. And the runner moves up. Strike three called on that outside corner again. We go to the third, no score. Well, Dwayne, let's head back to the nation's capital. Apparently there is some fight in these Indians yet. How about Ryan Flaherty? Don't you belong in Baltimore? 
He gets the ball down into the corner. Greg Allen's going to come all the way around and score. Eventually, he would be moved up to third. Francisco Lindor with a sacrifice fly, and they have come back and tied that game in the third. Well, Flaherty rejuvenated. Washington close enough to Baltimore. That, that There you go. Ground ball. That's a base hit to right for Joey Wendell on an 0-1 pitch. And Joey is on for the second time. We walk to start this game. Now leadoff single in the third. Leadoff runner aboard. Let's see if the Rays can make it can make it hurt. This ball staying down and in. And Wendell able to get enough steam on that baseball to roll it out there into right field. Austin Meadows, who had that extended at bat in the first inning before he hit a fly ball. Caught by Hernandez in center. Boy, maybe seeing all those pitches really helps in this A.B. Because you're right, he saw a ton of them, and he saw all of them. It was an 11 pitch at bat for him. Breaking ball in there. It's one and one. Meadows hitting at 21 of his last 22 coming into this game, hitting over 400 for that stretch. And again, he's ahead in the count. Tommy Pham on deck. This one into left center. It's Fisher and Hernandez. Hernandez right in front. Well, Fisher makes the catch. So the second time Meadows has gone out to Hernandez. And the first out in the third for Tommy Pham. Back in. We've got a number of base runners early for both clubs in this game. No score yet. Bam shoots it into left. That ball's got some carry. And two on the board. Tommy Pham puts the Rays out in front with a two-run home run. His 21st of the year. For the Rays, Tommy Pham, a line drive homer out of here to left. 108 off the bat. Hey. Tell you what, when you when you go back and look at the replay, you cannot let Zoik's pitches up in the zone go by unpunished. We talked about it early on, and that's exactly what Tommy Pham did. Hung a breaking ball, and he absolutely mashed it. They stay up, they flatten, see ya. Single by Wendell. One out, two run home run by Pham. And the Rays take the lead. Balls, two strikes. And 
Lau out on strikes. Two gone in the inning. Pham has been nursing that right arm in as the DH. There's that pitch away to get Lau. Change up, moving away. Ball Darno misses. That home run for Pham, his first in September. He hit one on the last day of August against the Indians at Tropicana Field. And it's a big one tonight to put the Rays out in front. There's a long one, well tagged, but well foul. That one into the upper deck, and I mean well up into the upper deck. It's about maybe eight rows up. <laughs> that was a hanging breaking ball, and fortunately for Zoic, it hung that poorly that Darno could not keep it fair. On the ground foul outside of third. the landing on this one. I'm not sure that anybody up there, Dwayne, expected a ball <laughs> coming their way. I'm just thinking the same thing. You buy a ticket, you go, oh, okay, that's fine. You have no <laughs> expectation <laughs> that you're going to get a souvenir baseball up there. Lifted into center. Vigio goes out from second. Waiting for it. He makes the catch. Rays are out in the third, but they come up with two on one swing of the bat from Tommy Pham. Breaking ball hit out to left. Two nothing Tampa Bay. Rays baseball on Fox Sports Sun brought to you by W.B. Mason. Who but W.B. Mason the official office supply company of the Tampa Bay Rays and by your local Toyota dealer. Rays grabbing a 2 0 lead. Derek Fisher opens the bottom of the third for Toronto against Tyler Glass now. 33 pitches through the first two for Tyler. Pitch is a strike. Ozzie Timmons going to work there after a couple runs on that home run. Two on Fisher. You, you wonder at the end of a game when, when Ozzy gets uh, undressed and you know gets ready to shower up and head back to the the hotel or back home wherever he's wherever he's going. Yeah, how I, many I, seats? I never really thought about that before, but if, now that yeah, you bring it up. I, I know it, it does sound absolutely creepy, but <laughs> there's a, a bigger point. It, it was when he was getting up. I was wondering how many of those seats make their way down into his sliding shorts, mm -hmm. and so what kind of cleanup is there? You know what I mean? I mean, he had a lot of them right there in that little where the, the belt line was. And yeah, you well, know that there's a few rogue ones that, that weasel their way down. It's a very in-depth investigation required for I'm that. Gonna, and I'm going to ask him about it, as uncomfortable as it may be. And I'll have an answer. Because <laughs> yeah. there's a couple in there already. He yeah, doesn't look, even know it. He's in his back pocket there. He's, he's 
doing a little uh, housework right there. <laughs> oh. Oh, that pitch just missed, and boy, Dorno thought he had strike three. Boy, he, he hopped out of there, get ready to fire that ball out to Joey Wendell. Come on now, Laz, that's a strike, and you know it. Yeah. That's foul ball out of play. Well, you get that rhythm, and you know, suddenly you realize you have no dance partner. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they tell you you never assume. Yeah. He assumed that was going to be be strike three. Yeah. It's like the pitcher that goes to walk off the mound, and then he's got to slowly make his way back up uh, there. Darno's going, Lance, come on, dance with me a little there. Please. <laughs> Fly ball, center field. Kiermaier started back, now comes in and makes the grab. Fisher is out number one. Coming up tomorrow on Rays Live pregame show, presented by your local Honda dealers, what will that AL wildcard race look like tomorrow? We'll be with you at 2.30, and Arrestus will break down Austin Meadows, hitter to hitter there, all beginning at 2.30. Billy McKinney, top of the order. Ball on strikes. Well, a lot of young talent Charlie Montoya has had to sort through this year. Trying to figure out exactly what he has to go forward with. McKinney waves and misses, one and one. I think that the, the feeling around the game is that the Blue Jays, are, you know, closer than a lot of other teams. You know, when you think about the, the Tigers and the team from South Florida and some yep. of the other ones sprinkled in there, that, that maybe the, the Blue Jays kind of have a head start. You think about Guerrero Jr. comes to mind right off the top. Bo Bichette, how about his splashy entrance into the big leagues? Mm -hmm. BGO, you know, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., change of position, change of fortunes. You know, Reese McGuire intriguing back behind the plate. I think he is uh, kind of the sleeper here. We've been impressed with his catching the, the little bit we had seen of it, and now he's put together some offense mm -hmm. as well. Yep. The, the problem is, is you, you could make a jump and it, it not really be seen in the American League East. You know, the yep. Rays aren't going anywhere. The Yankees aren't going anywhere. Boston, they're going to do their best to retool. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they certainly have a, a ton of talent, at least at the big league level. So you can make that jump and still it's going to be tough. Baltimore is going to be very tough. And a strike. Now three and two. I think Laz thought that was strike three. He, he rung him on strike two. Yeah, yeah, now I got it. Oh, that's three, two now. Yeah. Lifted to the left side. Wendell out there calling it, making the catch. And McKinney is the second out. Because I'm going to tell you what, if this is your strike two call, yeah. I shudder to think what your strike three call is going to look like. If this is your two. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do on three? You just punch the guy? You just drop him? Yeah, you just wind it up there. And then you release on strike three. Yeah, here's the click. <laughs> and there's the pull. There you go. No big deal. <laughs> and a strike call. Look at that. Right there was a nice little. Mm -hmm. Didn't didn't have both arms in action. Laz is feeling it tonight. Yeah, he's loosening up back there. Last now quickly ahead of Biggio, nothing at two after walking him on four pitches in the first. Upstairs. 
ball, two strikes. Did he go? Yes, he did. After all the hard stuff, he drops that in there. One, two, three, we go to the fourth. Two-nothing Rays. Now it's time for T-Mobile's connection to the game. The Minnesota Twins with 99 wins over in the AL Central, becoming the first team in Major League history to produce 300 home runs in a single season. Made low, fouls the first pitch back here. The fourth inning underway. Minnesota now with 301 home runs. The Yankees have 299. And they play Texas tonight in Arlington. One and one. So the Twins, the first in MLB history to hit the 300 mark. You know what? And the, and the Minnesota Twins can thank the Tampa Bay Rays for that because the Rays pitching staff went to town on the Yankees in that two-game series. 21 innings, one run from a team that you know led at the time the, the, the league in, in, in runs and, and home runs for a, a minute yep. and gave them one run in 21 innings, and it was as dominant as it sounds. And as a result of that, there's ball four to low. The Rays pitching staff again has the best earned run average in the American League. Coming in tonight at 3.63. You know, talking about the home runs, here's the other thing. Uh, Baltimore has given up over 300 home runs. Everybody has given up more than 200 except Minnesota and the Rays. And the Twins are only five home runs away from allowing 200. Coming in, the Rays had given up 177. So it would be safe to assume that the Rays could be the only team this year to give up fewer than 200 home runs in the American League. Well, pretty astounding when you think about the year of the home run. And boy, how many franchises at the end of Sunday are going to have set Franchise records for home runs. The amount that have been hit, and I, I can't wait to see what the final number is. I think 6,105 was the previous record for homers in a season, and that's well been well passed. Yeah, and having said that, the Rays have given up the fewest home runs in all of Major League Baseball. But there are a handful of National League teams who have not given up 200, and probably won't. Ground ball, Garcia to third. Guerrero Jr. makes the play to first. The broken bat ground ball sends Nate Lowe up to second, and Garcia is out number one. Now the Dodgers and the Cardinals in the National League have given up 185 home runs. And they're tied for second for fewest home runs given up in the major leagues following the Rays at 177 allowed. Now Kevin Kiermeyer shows the bunt and did not offer, says Jeff Nelson. Ball one. Vladimir Guerrero said, hey, ask uh, Jeff Nelson. They said, oh, we already did. Guerrero thought it was an offer, that ball on the bunt attempt. Now a big swing and a miss, and down to one knee. One and one. Tapper foul with low at second base. Kiermaier trying to extend the Rays lead. They picked up two on the fam homer in the third, leading two to nothing, and now a man in scoring position. And 
the pitch is a strike call on the outside corner. That's out number two. Wow, how about that? That breaking ball didn't look like it was close to the zone at all. It still gets the call. That's a pitch you can almost not reach. I'm sure that Kiermaier, extremely frustrated, probably doesn't even have to look at the video on that one. Now Willie Adamas, Let's see if he can pick up this extra run. No ball, no strikes. Line drive, there it is, base hit into center. Nate Lowe heads to the plate. Adamas comes through to make it three to nothing. Got two words for you, Dwayne. Two words, plate coverage. And wait till you see it on Willie Adamas. Boy, he got out there, that ball on the edge or maybe just off the plate. Look at him lengthen. And enough power to get that ball in the air, drop it out into center field. Nate Lowe, no hesitation whatsoever. With two outs, you're running on the crack of the bat, and the Rays add on. So the Rays make it a 3 0 lead. Adamas at first. Joey Wendell with a walk and a single. And a run scored up in the count this time, 1-0. Oh. It's foul the other way. Three runs, four hits. And a move to first sends Adamas back. And to center field. It's going to hang up there for Hernandez. Rays are out into fourth. They had a run. 3 0 Tampa Bay. The Blue Jays 3 0 in the bottom of the fourth inning. Well, Tyler Glass now is on the mound for the Rays today, and he is fearing, feeling very encouraged after coming back from the IL, especially after his encouraging performance in his last outing against Boston. In three innings, he had seven strikeouts and two hits. And he told me, after making so much progress, pitching today in a game where they could clinch, he said, this is what you play the game for. Being a little kid, you always think about going to the playoffs. And now that it's in front of him, he said, it's unbelievably exciting. And guys, if you're wondering, Glass now, told me that he doesn't feel like he missed a single beat since returning from injury. And so far, we're seeing that today, guys. Yeah, so far, so good as Grichik leads it off. The count is 2-0 and oh, as Blastow opens the fourth inning. We had a 1-2-3 third, including a strikeout of Biggio to end the inning, his fourth strikeout of the game. The strike says Laz Diaz. It's two and one. That will square the count. Two and two. Now Fifty pitches through three for Glass. Now he's two two here. To Grichik to Les next, then Guerrero Jr. Skies it to the right side. Nate Lowe starts out there and is under it to make the catch. Getting out there from first base into shallow right. 
Last now gave up a walk to Biggio in the first with one out. He walked Hernandez with two outs in the second. That to this point accounts for both base runners for Toronto. Here's Rowdy Telez. The pitch down, one ball, no strikes. Fifty-six pitches. Blast now made fifty-two in three innings his last time. There's a blast into right center field. Kiermaier is going to be there just in front of the track, in front of Garcia. That a towering shot back in there. That seemed to just die. You know, it, it, this is one of those games, Dwayne, where you're coming in, you're wondering, what's the giveaway? You know, final weekend of the season, you know, say thanks to the fans. This is depth perception night, <laughs> or lack thereof, because this stadium got real excited about a fly ball that didn't get to the warning track. Yep. Well, here is Vlad Guerrero Jr. I, I think it's one of those you just assume. Rowdy Telez gets into one that high, that's going to go, right? Same with this guy. Oh, no, no, yep. Well, the deal is with Telez, he'd hit a couple of home runs off Glass now already. Three hits off him, two of them home runs. Guerrero takes a mighty cut and fouls this one back. Guerrero, by the way, has not hit a home run since August the 22nd at Dodger Stadium. Wow. And to the dirt, two and one. Fifteen home runs for Guerrero. It's a three and one count. Rays after their 96th win of the year tonight. Guerrero on the ground. Brandon Lau. Makes that play on the shortstop side of second, a one, two, three, fourth, three nothing, Tampa Bay. Three nothing, Rays lead. Moving on to the fifth inning, the Ameritrade right call for the Rays against the Blue Jays this year. It's a 12 and four season series record. They've outscored him 91 to 63. Although with his Blue Jay power. They've hit one more home run than the Rays. The Rays 12 and 4. 8 and 2 at the drop. 4 and 2 so far here. Meadows takes a strike. Austin leading off here. 0 for 2. And down. Nothing at two. Top of the fifth in Washington. Indians and the Nationals tied 2 2. A ball, two strikes. On the ground, Guerrero, the only defender on the left side, throws a strike to first. Meadows out, 5-3. And now Tommy Pham coming up. Here's the StatCast AI powered by AWS. Boy, a hanging breaking ball and a little over 108 miles an hour off the bat. Not much of a 
launch angle, but I'll tell you what, you put that kind of juice behind it, it's gonna go. And that's what got it started for the Rays. So Pham, one out of two tonight. And the pitch is a strike. And that home run, his first since August the 31st against Cleveland when he connected off Zach Plesak. On the ground this time, chopped toward the middle. Urania in a hurry makes the throw. Bam is out number two. Brandon Lau on his way to the plate. A strike. Well, hit the ball on a line to right field his first time up. Caught by McKinney. Struck out on the off speed pitch into third, and he fouls this one down off the foot. Boy, anytime you see something foul down around the shin or the foot, you're concerned about Lau. He's still not 100% running. Right off the top of the foot, and you're right. You, you, you've seen him from time to time still favoring that leg just a little bit. But boy, I mean, wants to be out there. You're going to play through some some pain, and certainly he is uh, at least discomfort at this point playing through. But these are the types of games that you live for. I mean, this is, as a kid, a chance to, to get into the postseason at the highest level of baseball. You know, and you sometimes wonder, Brandon and Nate, Low talking to him briefly about some of these young players. Uh, you know, it's 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 not every year that this opportunity presents itself. I think that was Tommy Pham's message to the team a few weeks back. Like, yeah. hey, fellas, it's about today. We can't look at this like, you know, tough loss. We'll go get him tomorrow. We, we, we can't have that kind of an attitude. Not saying that anybody did, but he's just pointing out that fact. You yeah. don't know if you'll ever get this opportunity again. So seize it. Yeah, that reminder never hurts. And I think they're all pretty much focused on the job at hand on a daily basis. But when you realize it might not happen every year, you appreciate it even more. And the off speed gets Lau. He's out in front. One, two, three, go the Rays for the first time tonight. They lead three to nothing. All right, you got a great moment on this day, 2012. It's Fernando Rodney pitching around a two-out ninth-inning single to get the save in a 3-2 win at U.S. Cellular Field. His 46th save to set a single-season club record. Well, that's in the wayback machine there. Carlos Pena, Evan Longoria, Fernando Rodney. We go to the bottom of the fifth out there again. It's Tyler Glass now. Facing Reese McGuire, and there's a strike. 62 pitches through four innings. And they're they're letting him go. Yeah, stretching him out even more. The reins have been taken off the thoroughbred. One and one. They've had Colin Poche up in the bullpen. So it was Luciano warming for Toronto. You know, and, and I don't even care if he doesn't get the opportunity to finish this inning. It's the ups and downs now. So the pitch count, you know, he's up 13 over his last start, about to be 14, but it's the up and downs. Now up for the fifth time after warming up. Ground ball, first base. Nate Lowe takes care of that unassisted. One out here in the fifth inning. And now a word from Center State Bank. We take the time to understand each of our customers to make them the most successful. Teoscar Hernandez is due up 
And Kevin Cash is headed to the mound. 66 pitches for Glass now. And that's going to be it for the hard throwing right hander. Call to the bullpen brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Well, our Coors Light refreshing finish, the outing by Tyler Glasnow. Said you wanted a, a quick start off the mound and keeping the other team at bay, and Tyler Glasnow has given the Rays that. Love the fact that he was able to get out into the fifth inning, get build the pitch count up, build the up and downs up, and another great step here for the young, talented righty. And how about he's going to give way, Dwayne, to Colin Poche. So where Glass now had the best extension on the four-seam fastball, Poche was right behind him. So that's what it's all about here tonight. Yeah, the pitcher's right there on the hitters. 51st appearance for Poche, a 1-0 count to the Oscar Hernandez, and he shoots it into left. That's going to one-hop the fence for a ground rule double. He's on for the second time tonight. And with that, on the second pitch delivered by Poche, Blue Jays have their first hit. And that pitch not up in the zone. Colin Poche, that four-seam fastball, its effectiveness most of the time predicated by where it is in the strike zone. And that was more middle. And you see when the ball starts to come down with him, that hitters have a better chance. He's at the top of the zone. He is virtually unhittable. Durania lifting a high pop fly shallow center. That's Kiermeyer, And he makes the catch on that one. Well, that ball plenty high in the shallow center. About twice as high as it was deep. Two gone. Now Derek Fisher to bat against Poche. Fisher went out to center in the third. Ball caught by Kiermeyer. That against Tyler Glass now. Time. It's low. Blocked by Darno. One and oh. Behind in the count. A two ball, no strike count. Sixty six pitches tonight for Glass now. He was very good. This one is popped up, foul ball. Wendell after it. So's Darno, and Wendell is there with a much better angle. Boy, Darno. Covered a lot of ground, almost an impossible angle for him. Wendell there to grab it. On to the sixth. Well, the Rays hold a 3 0 lead, and Tyler Glass now making the start four to third. Got help from Tommy Pham. The two run home run, number 21 for Pham. It came in the third with Wendell aboard. And Willie Adamas drove home. Nate Lowe with a two out single in the fourth inning. And the Rays do five. Hold this three to nothing lead. Opening the final series of the regular season here in Toronto with an eye toward clinching a postseason spot. 
take a combination of a Rays win and a Cleveland loss to do it today. Elvis Luciano is going to be the new pitcher. Five innings for the starter, T.J. Zoik. And then keep an eye on those walks. 24 walks and 32 and two-thirds to go along with just 26 strikeouts. So command an issue for Luciano. This pitch is too low. A ball, no strikes. There are no 0 for 2 right now in this game. Number one. Ninety one pitches for Zork, fifty four strikes in the five innings he worked. Walked three, struck out three, gave up three runs. Two on the FAM home run. And, and you could see some flashes uh, on why the, the Blue Jays are intrigued with, with Zoik and how they feel that he you know, could be a part of their future rotation. Fly ball center field. Hernandez straight away out there makes the catch. Move on. Well, the wild card race, the Rays getting ever closer. They can clinch a postseason berth, as we mentioned, with a win tonight in combination with a Cleveland loss. Love the fact, and, and I know that everybody downstairs does too, the fact that the Rays control their own destiny. If they go out and win, okay, Indians win. Go out and win tomorrow, you're in. Uh, that's that it's that simple and there's no better feeling to know that if we take care of our business we're going to the postseason and that's that's all you can ask for don't have to rely on help certainly like some tonight to get that celebration going but you don't need it Number two out on strikes. He went up to get him. With the fastball, two gone. Hey, reserve your 2020 race season tickets. Secure the best seat locations, concessions, and merchandise discounts, and have access to exclusive events all season. Plus, get access to 2019 postseason tickets. Visit racebaseball.com slash season tickets. Two up, two down against Luciano. Here's Avi Garcia. Strike right there. Doubled up on that pitch. Another good two. You could see why the Blue Jays would be intrigued with the stuff of Luciano. You know, you clean up some of those command issues. A lively mid-90s fastball and a nasty slider there with good depth. Doesn't look like he's putting a whole lot of effort into it either. It's very smooth. That's a long one, but it's going to be foul. Another? Oh, almost got a second one up there, Dwayne. Two in one night. Come on. Uh, yeah. Have you Pushing it a little bit. But they're just beyond the level of excellence. What a level to be on. Hey, by the way, I never even got a chance uh, to, to bring this up, I don't think, during the game. But really loved your um, incorporation of a little Al Davis into our opening tease a couple of games ago. Just win, baby. And you sold it, too. Just win, baby. I mean, that's the old Raiders. The old Raiders. Commitment to excellence. You get uh, this close. Anything and everything. 
Garcia grounds out. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Three, nothing Rays. We're heading to the bottom of the sixth inning here at Rogers Center. It's been a perfect combination for the Rays. Very good pitching, timely hitting. Could have been a little bit more timely right here, except Billy McKinney out there in right field. And our bonefish grill, fresh catch of the game, taking extra bases away from Willie Adamas and keeping the Rays off the scoreboard for the time being. But since then, the Rays have been able to plate three runs. And it's Billy McKinney leading off here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Colin Poche, who took over for Glass now, one out into the fifth, gave up a double, then got the next two hitters, and is ahead of McKinney, one strike. It's fouled back, nothing in two. You mentioned that approach by Poche last inning, and he wants to keep that fastball riding up you know he he divided his time at the collegiate level between the University of Arkansas and uh, Dallas Baptist and he had a little Tommy John situation in between but he was a sinker ball guy at uh, Arkansas for the Razorbacks and ran into Wes Johnson who's the twins pitching coach now and he's the guy at Dallas Baptist who had him. Let's go. Let's see. go up in the zone and get after it. And that's gotten him to the big leagues. Strike call right there. Guess what? It's what's got Wes Johnson to the big leagues, too. That's exactly right. You, you turn enough guys around and you're going to get a big league job. And, you know, that that's really interesting because that's all the rage. And the thing that makes it interesting about Poche is, you know, you see that with Garrett Cole. You see it with the Rays and Tyler Glass now, but you've got elite velocity. Colin Poche, it, good velocity, yep. but but not, you know, he's not 97, 98. Yep. He could go 92, 93, 94 up there, and these hitters, they take swings at it like it is 98, 99. Really good deception on top of a very effective pitch. Biggio tries to bunt and loops it over that shift with only one man over there. He's going to run that into a double. How about that for Biggio? Only one man on the left side, and he just bunted that into a pop-up over the infield. This is why you tune in day in and day out. You're going to see things from time to time you've never seen before, and you can see right there that Biggio, and I want to see that highlight again, Another replay. He did that on purpose. He didn't he watch the bunt. He flicks the bat forward. He's trying to hit that. Yep. That's a little half bunt swing. Yep. He tried to do exactly what he did. Wow. Wasn't a bunt gone bad. It was a little, it's let a, me just poke it. It's a serve. It, it is. He just served it <laughs> right over the defender's head. That was Lau over there. And has himself a double. Tell you, what, how about the bat control? So now man at second. Grichik at the plate. Boy, watch, watch him just punch that. Oh, man. Nobody home. And people scurrying everywhere. You had low headed to second to take a throw. You had Poche headed to second. Foul right back, 0-2 now on Gritchick. Now that's a bunt double for Biggio. How about that? I don't think I've seen that before. And I've never seen it done on purpose. <laughs> A foul ball. Remember all those times you've said about the shift? The thing you're going to have to do as a hitter is to hit the ball the other way. So you're going to have to think outside the box, and Biggio certainly is doing that. Yeah. I, I mean, bunt the ball, strongly bunt the ball the other way for extra bases. Covered up by Darno. his 
17th double. And he served us with something we have never seen before. Now we talked about the splashy beginning of his career with Bo Bichette up here and Kevin Biggio, same type of thing. Talked about that on base streak. Foul back, that's out of play. The wherewithal and the guts to do what he just did right there. Okay, you want to do that? I'll just, I'll take my shot over there. Because if I execute, there's nobody to catch it. There's nobody to make a play. And a shot of that bullpen, Oliver Drake. Joining Chaz Rowe. And a high pop right side. Low inside the line. Now it's Lau over there. Lau runs low off and Lau makes the catch. Two gone. Rowdy Telez will be the hitter. Telez has grounded to first, has gone out to center. <laughs> Which is up. One and oh. Miss. And him out in front, reaching. One ball, one strike. Ray scored two in the third on the FAM home run. Adamas drove in a run in the fourth with a base hit. It's going to be low and blocked. Nicely by Darno. Like a first baseman. How about that do or die backhand? Shea gets a swing and miss from Telez. Two and two. That pitch has become very important for Colin Poche. It keeps these hitters honest, especially from the left side, where it's not all fastball. It's going to be majority fastball, but he'll sprinkle in enough sliders to keep you honest, and that was a very good one. Now a step back. Thomas slipping in behind Vigio for a moment and then returning to his spot at short. Strike three on the outside corner. The fastball gets to Laz looking. We go to the seventh inning, three nothing Ray. Well, back to D.C. we go, and Gerardo Parra, how about this? That fly ball deep into left center field, deep enough to get a run home. Sacrifice fly, Nationals break a score at 3-2. to two. And then how about this? Former Indian as Drupal Cabrera deep out into right field. That's going to plate two, and Washington starting to distance themselves. They lead it by three. It's getting late. Same thing here. Put up by a game on the Rays and the wild card race. And the Rays 
up by two in that second wild card spot ahead of Cleveland. Thomas Benone, the lefty, the new pitcher, cut in the miss by Kiermaier. Benone, pitcher number three for Charlie Montoyo. And he's going to give you a different look, that is for sure, with that arm slot, arm angle, release point. That's a hot shot, fair, headed for the corner. Kiermaier gets a chance to run. Digging for two, and he will stop there. McKinney went into the corner to get that. A double for Kiermaier, his 20th of the year. Well, keeps that pitch up in the zone, and Kiermaier is able to, to, to get to it. Levels that swing out, and then off to the races. McKinney threw a like a circle change there with a lot of arm side action. Had a better Somebody chance should to... take note of that. Yeah, really? We've got a lot of two-way players being developed. <laughs> Why not? Here's Willie Adamas. Base hit into right field. McKinney's going to make the pickup. They'll have to stop Kiermaier at third. Throw comes through, bounces away. That's going to allow Adamas to move up to second. And the Rays will have two men in scoring position on the base hit to right and then the throw that bounced away. Boy, sloppy, sloppy there by the Blue Jays. Pannone leaving a pitch out over the plate. Again, Willie Adamas in that nine hole. Kevin Kiermaier, they have combined here for a threat. And then this ball cannot get away from Reese McGuire. That, that just can't happen. Willie really Adamas all set to stay at first base. Instead, up at second. Blue Jays bring the infield not all the way in, but closer. And Joey Wendell up against Pannone. Up to strike. Those errors, that one charged to McKinney. Always a tough error on the outfielder there. Yeah, you're, you're right about that. And you could see the, the death stare in from, from right field. Like, really? I made a good throw with a good hop, and I just got an E for that? Strike two to Wendell. So the Rays in a position here to add on. Yeah, he's not happy. No. No. And, and you know what? Really... You could have given him an air on that changeup that he threw <laughs> on a double by Kiermaier. And a wave and a miss. And Wendell is out on strikes, chasing that pitch from Pannone. First out of the inning. Boy, he's sweeping the breaking ball and, and, and able to pick up the strike. I how far that pitch ended up off the plate, but. Stayed on it long enough to get Joey to swing. I'll tell you, Im imperative here for the Rays. Get these runs in. Yeah, you've got, you've given yourself a, a great opportunity with the bottom of the order, second and third. Now with one out, and got a chance to to really open this things up. Well, you have Meadows, Austin Meadows, do up. That's Ryan Tapera in the bullpen for Toronto, and Meadows comes up here. Arguably the Rays' best hitter. He leads the team in hitting and home runs and runs batted in. And he's been pretty good lefty on lefty. So here's Meadows against Pannone. Infield up on the right side. Shifted over there. Ooh, and that's a strike. Meadows thought it was high. Diaz liked it. It's Andrew Kittrich in the Rays bullpen. Big opportunity for the Rays to expand the lead. One and one.
Meadows three for eight with a home run in his career against Pinnell. And now takes that one wide. Two balls and a strike. Three and one. Well, it's three one. Padone has yet to throw him a strike. He heard you talking about Meadows and how good he's been against lefties, how good he's been in the month of September. He wants no part of it. Tommy Pham on deck. Ball four up and in. No chance to hit that one. So the walk loads the bases. And now a word from the Florida Lottery. Be on the lookout for the new $5 million luck scratch off from the Florida Lottery. Well, things haven't worked out with Pannone. Charlie Montoyo out of the dugout. Pannone got one out, leaves with the bases loaded. Call to the bullpen. Brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Raise baseball on Fox Sports Sun. Brought to you by AutoNation. Shop now at AutoNation.com. By your local Ford dealers. And by your local Honda dealer. Welcome back to Toronto. We're in the top of the seventh. The Rays hold a 3 nothing lead and an opportunity to break it open. Bases loaded, one out. Ryan Tapera is going to be the new pitcher, making his 22nd appearance, and Tommy Pham will be the first man to face him. Been a difficult year physically for Tapera, beginning with some elbow inflammation in the spring and time on the IL. Pitch is down and away. with a home run back in the third inning. And he fouls that pitch. is down with the fastball. Two and one. Start to paint yourself into a corner here. You start to uh, get to where you're running out of options. You can't work quite to the edges. Tommy Pham, if he continues to be patient, and he has shown that over the majority of the, of the season, that good strike zone disciplined and being patient for a pitch that he can drive. Ground ball third. Guerrero to Biggio. Throw to first. He gets the double play. Around the horn. 5-4-3. And the Rays do not score. 3-0 Tampa Bay. All right, fellas, thank you very much for the update. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. That's Chaz Rowe taking over. Pitcher number three for the Rays on to face Vlad Guerrero Jr. Pitch is a strike on the outside corner. I'll tell you what, Chaz Rowe uh, rounding into form at the perfect time, too. Yeah, there, there were some struggles earlier in the season with some command issues, trying to keep that, that slider on the plate, even the fastball command. But he has been really good as of late. 
And, you know, you're seeing more of a range of pitches. You know, a lot more sliders. He's throwing front door sliders, then sliders off the plate, occasional cutter, still sprinkle in that fastball. Up the middle and a base hit into center for Guerrero. His first hit tonight. And there was one of those cutters right there. Problem was he left it right in the middle of the plate. Dangerous spot, 86 miles an hour, and it just it stays flat, not a ton of movement. Trying to get this pitch to the end of the bat, not able to do it. Third hit picked up by Toronto. Blue Jays have the leadoff hitter aboard for the first time tonight. That's going to be it for Rowe. Call to the bullpen brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Raise baseball on Fox Sports Sun is brought to you by the Florida Lottery. The Florida Lottery reminds you to always play responsibly and by your Southern Chevy dealers. Oliver Drake now on from the Rays bullpen. Casro faced one man, gave up the base hit. And Drake is on for the 50th time. Faces Reese McGuire. The pitch is a strike. McGuire, left handed hitting catcher. And Drake, the right handed lefty in the bullpen for the Rays. That's a strike. 0 oh, 2. Adam Hamari down at third says he went around. Ground ball, right side, diving stop, out at second. The Rays get the lead runner there with Wendell over there to take the toss. Well, there McGuire was, reaches out of fielder's choice. You know, and, and with the way that the defense was set up, initially you were just thinking this could be a, a pretty easy double play. But that ball was just placed well enough that it forced a dive from Lau. And once he did that, now you're down. There's your option. Boy, nice play, too. If that would have snuck through, then you start to get a little nervous. There you are as nervous when you have a chance to score in the top of the inning. Oh. You don't. And then they come back and put the leadoff man on. You're going, nope, you got to stop this now. Yep. I mean, and you could feel it. Second and third, nobody out. Bases loaded, one out. Hmm. Here's Hernandez. Pitch. Fastball 95, and that's a strike on the edge. Close there, up and in. One and one. He's trying to battle their way to a postseason berth. And a wave and a miss. It would be the first time since 2013. And I think I'm correct in saying this. The only man in uniform who was on that 2013 team still in uniform for the Rays is Stan Borowski. I'd have to comb the roster to make sure, but I'm <laughs> pretty sure that's right. Oh, up and in, and Hernandez spins to get out of there. It's two and two. There's Stan out there. 
bullpen coach. He got an important role tonight, getting that bullpen ready to hold this lead. High fly ball into right. Garcia's going to go to the wall. He'll leap, and that one's into the bullpen. An opposite field two-run home run, and now it is three to two. One run charge to row. Here's the home run. Uh, that ball right out over the plate. Tasker Hernandez with a big swing, big carry. Garcia giving it an effort, but he just drops it on the other side of that wall, and this was your fear. Not adding on in the top half, and immediately an answer by the Blue Jays, and now just a one-run game. Wave and a miss by Urania. So Hernandez connects. 3 2 now. And 0 2 the count after that swing and miss. Cutting a miss. That will be out number two. Drake gets his first strikeout. Rays now have Nick Anderson up. Derek Law up in the bullpen for Toronto. Anderson, the hard throwing right hander. Fisher waves and misses. Go to. Close, boy, just missed on that one. One and two. Now he gets him on a swing and miss to retire the side. Limits the damage to two. We go to the eighth. Three, two, Rays. Toyota game summary Rays with a couple in the third, one in the fourth, three, six, and zero. Oh. Toronto with a couple in the seventh after the Rays missed an opportunity to add on in their top half of the inning. Two, four, and one for the Blue Jays. Tyler Glass now opening. 66 pitches through four and a third. Moshe, Rowe, and Drake since then. Tommy Pham with a two-run homer. And. Oscar Hernandez, a two-run homer. So the difference in this game is the single by Willie Adamas in the fourth, and it drove in Nate Lowe. On to the eighth we go. 
Buddy Boshers enters this game. The lefty. Brandon Lau due to lead off the eighth. Aguilar, Jesus Aguilar will pinch hit for him. Twelve home runs on the year for Aguilar. The pitch is a strike. I'm sure Aguilar liked that call. There have been a, a number of those. Wide there. One and one. Four of those 12 home runs for Aguilar in a Rays uniform. Misses that one. Good change up there by Boshers down and away. Aguilar pulling right off of it, trying to get that ball airborne. Watch him pull off. That ball moving down and away, the swing moving up and away, the other way. We'll keep the count right there at 1 2. Nice little play there with the hat. Forget the glove. He played the hop well with the hat. He's gonna take home a baseball because of it. It's a replay. Well, that was nice too. Good hat control. That thing fall out of there. Aguilar strikes out. Gone in the eighth. Join the race street team Sunday at Rumfish Beach Resort by trade winds on St. Pete Beach for a race watch party. Race take on the Blue Jays at 3.07. And the live pregame show begins at 2.30. For info, visit raysbaseball.com slash radio. Raise up. Charlie Montoyo out to make a pitching change. Third of an inning for the lefty. Ball to the bullpen, brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Sweets and party areas for the 2019 postseason are on sale now. Enjoy playoff baseball from the comfort of a suite or host your group of 20 or more in a field-level party area behind the Rays bullpen. For more info, call 888-FAN-RAYS or email sweets at raysbaseball.com. Derek Law, the new pitcher, 57th appearance on one and two for the year. Travis Darno will be the first man he faces. 40 walks, just over 59 innings. May not matter with the strike zone tonight. Oh boy, I'm telling you, that's a strike. And uh, Darno will back out of there and try to recalibrate uh, <laughs> what he thinks the strike zone might be. <laughs> It's jumping around. Mm -hmm. It's the third quarter in Madison, Wisconsin. And what does uh, Law do? He goes right back out there. This what? one is a ball. Why not? Hey, let's see if he'll do it again. Rays missed a chance to add on in the seventh, leaving two. Now a strike, and it's one and two. Up the right side, that's going to drop in there. Fair ball inside the line, and Darno is aboard with a base hit. One out single. Let's see if the Rays can build something around that. Yeah, this has gotten a little too close for comfort. Seemingly a game the Rays were in control of. And you'll take this, a little inside out. Pop that ball down that right field line, keep it fair. A 
it low to bat. And that's a strike at the very bottom of the zone. down one and one <laughs> one and two now. Square the count. Two balls, two strikes. Bobby Garcia on deck. He's facing Derek Law. Ooh, and a foul ball back. Fastball up. Too low, and the count goes to three and two. Now Washington continues to lead Cleveland 7 2. They're going into the bottom of the eighth with the Nationals coming in to hit. Three more outs. Three more outs, and the Rays, hey, they need to take care of their business here tonight. That's up the right side. Going to be a fair ball on the line. Bounding back toward the corner and out of play. So a double. That sends Darno to third and low. Picks up his eighth double of the year and another opportunity for the Rays. Well, look at him yelling at that ball. Stay fair, stay fair, stay fair. It did. And you're right, another opportunity cannot allow this one to go by the wayside. You put yourself in that position, Darno coming out of the ball game at this point. He got it started with the bloop single to right. Single up the right side, then the double pulled up the right side just fair. And the Rays put some speed. Johnny Davis is the pinch runner. And I think what that tells you, Dwayne, is that the Rays are going to be going, you know, you wonder with that runner at third, Blue Jays going to pull the infield in on contact or not. I think Johnny Davis tells you it's going to be on contact. They're not taking their chances. Fly ball to the outfield. You want to make sure that you guarantee yourself that run so you put the fastest guy on the squad at third base. Davis third, low second, infield in. Overload the left side with Avi Garcia at the plate, and the pitch is down and away, blocked by McGuire. Garcia has struck out twice as grounded out, once to third, the other one to second. Delez well off that first base bag. And closer than normal. Ground ball. That's going to skip through. Base hit. Davis will score. Lowe's going to go to third. Garcia drives in the run. 
He got it through that left side, and the Rays now lead 4-2. to two. Well, you, you cut down on the range. When you bring infielders in, yes, you, you got a chance to make a play, cut off a run, but you also limit your side-to-side, -side, your lateral movement. You can't cover as much ground. And so this ball grounded. Watch how you, that's a step and a dive. And by the way, you see Johnny Davis, he was going on contact. He was in a full sprint as soon as that ball was put into play. It like, almost seemed as though he, were cross, he was crossing the plate when the ball got to the defender. That, that's the thing, and that's why they put him out there. So if he makes that play, he's still, even though the infield's in, he's probably not going to be able to get Davis at the plate. And that's why Cash had him at third base. And Rays have added to their lead. Kevin Kiermaier takes a big cut, strike one. Men on the corners now, Garcia at first. And over at third, Nate Lowe. Well, a two-run ball game. It's Ryan Dull in the bullpen. And another miss by Kiermaier. Darno opened it with a one out single. Went to third on the double by Lowe. Davis ran for Darno, scored on the base hit off the bat of Garcia against the drawn in infield. And strike three called a fastball. Kiermaier out on three pitches. That was uh, quite the sequence put together there by Law. A couple of breaking balls down and in. You get him thinking about that pitch. And then you stick the 95 on the corner. Not much to argue with there. That was just a, a great sequence of high quality pitches by the Blue Jay reliever. Here's Willie Adamas now. He has two hits and a run batted in. Just missed. 1 0. He waves and misses. A raise with. Three hits in this inning and a run. They have nine hits on the night. And a big cut and a miss right there. Adamas trying to add to the Rays lead by threes there. He almost went down. That that front foot, his stride leg, when he took that big swing, came dislodged. That's why he kind of stumbled across the plate. That's how big that swing was. He's behind in the count now, one and two. It's too wide. Two and two. Let's go back to that swing. Watch the stride leg. How big it gets. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I tell you, that's that's what hitters, their eyes get huge. You hang a breaking ball, and they want to launch it to the moon. Two, two. Upstairs. A little bit. That was pretty close. The count is full. The 
Three two and a check swing. That'll be a foul ball. Garcia who was off on that two out three two count. Will retreat to first. And with men on the corners we'll see another three two pitch to Adamas. Nationals have added a run in the eighth. It's now an eight to two game. Rays lead four to two here. And a swing and a miss. Ball gets away. Runs going to score if the throw to first skips away. And now over to third goes Garcia. And the Rays keep the inning going, picking up another run. It's now five to two. Well, how about that? A strikeout to potentially end the inning for the Rays. The ball gets by McGuire. The throw. Boy, look at that. And that ball was should have been caught. I mean, that ball was in the air, did not bounce. And then how about Willie going down with the slide into the way of Rowdy Telez? You see that throw coming right in. I don't even, that throw may have hit Willie. Watch this. This ball does not bounce. Just missed. Right off the bottom of the glove. Or the hustle. For Adamas on that pass ball. And we're going to see a pitching change. Call to the bullpen brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Willie Adamas on the strikeout and the pass ball. Also an error on that play charged to McGuire with the additional base on the move up by Garcia. He was at first, winds up at third. Adamas aboard at first. Two runs home in the inning. Ryan Dahl, the new pitcher, and here's Wendell shooting one just foul. Wendell with a walk and a single and a run scored tonight. Officially one for three. So the Rays back to a three run lead. It had been clipped to one. Over to first, and look out, he almost. Picked off to Les. I don't know if he surprised him or if to Les somehow lost that ball in flight, but he was fortunate to catch it. Foul back the other way, 0 2. How about the Rays answer? It hasn't been a, a work of Art hasn't been exactly beautiful, but you know Toronto hits that two-run homer, and you're like, uh-oh, three-two, late, and they come right back, get some base runners. They do cash in this time, looking for more. And Wendell is out on strikes. Down to first goes the peg. Four strikeouts in the inning, but two runs for the Rays, and it's five-two. We go to the bottom of the eighth. The Rays picking up a couple in the top half of the eighth, and it's a 5-2 ball game now. Mike Zanino takes over behind the plate. Joey Wendell moves over to play second base. And Daniel Robertson enters the game to play third. With Oliver Drake still on the hill. And he faces the top of the order. Here's Billy McKinney. Ground ball. That's into short right. And they throw to first in time. So the Rays, with that big shift on, take care of out number one. Well, Dwayne, let's head back to D.C. And uh, I think our original call was right. Some early fight from the Cleveland Indians to tie the ball game up, but guess what? That would be it. Washington would pile on late, eight to two. Got Carlos Santana on a fastball up, and some shattered dreams in that dugout, and the Rays five outs away from having a chance to pop some corks. Well, the Rays came in here knowing that a Rays win and a Cleveland loss would do it for them. Kevin Biggio takes the pitch for a strike. 
And we have the Cleveland loss. And the Rays now holding this 5-2 lead in the bottom of the eighth. And, and I'll tell you, you know, who was the team, Dwayne, up until today that for the last couple of weeks has had the American League lead in ERA? That would be the Cleveland Indians. Rays are able to overtake them after having a great series against the Yankees. And now that Cleveland pitching staff, last three ball games, have given up eight runs in each of them and lost them all and now out. And a cut and a miss, so Biggio is out on strikes. Two gone in the eighth. Third strikeout for Oliver Drake. Boy, he is so nasty against lefties. That's the pitch, that split finger. That ball just tracking away from Biggio. Two gone, base is empty. Randall Gretchik. That is a strike. Well, the Rays attempting to make the playoffs for the fifth time in franchise history. It would be the first time since 2013. One and one now. And they do have this 5-2 lead. Two outs into the bottom of the eighth. Washington has beaten Cleveland 8 to 2. Just missed a little wide right there. It's 2 and 1. Well, we had all those combinations possible this weekend here among the A's and the Rays and the Indians 64 different possibilities. Wave and a miss, 2-2. Two -two. And the Rays now in a position. Haven't done it yet, but they're in a position to take care of it the first night in here in Toronto. Well, they've been able to compartmentalize one game at a time. Win tonight, we'll move on. Win tonight, move on. Need to do it one more time. And a cut and a miss. Gritchick out of there on strikes, and we are through eight with the Rays leading 5-2. We go to the ninth with the Rays holding a 5-2 lead in Toronto. Again, Washington has beaten Cleveland 8-2 in the nation's capital, and the Rays, as they come in to hit, are a successful inning away from making sure they have earned a playoff spot for the first time since 2013. We'll have Austin Meadows to lead off the ninth, followed by Tommy Pham. Ryan Dull on the hill, and the pitch is a strike. Well, Meadows tonight 0 for 3. He walked in the seventh inning. Hitting 291, leads the club in that department in home runs and runs batted in as well. Pitch is a strike, and it's nothing in two. Outside of all two strikes. The Rays initially missed an opportunity to tack on in the seventh. The bottom of that inning, Toronto scored two to make it a one run game, and the Rays back with two in the eighth. Two balls, two strikes. Saw Emilio Pagan up in the Rays bullpen. Well, the one thing you think about this team, it has been a collective effort. One man after another stepping up. And Pagan certainly has been an important part. But you could make a case for everybody on this team. Well, you, you've made the case before, reminding everybody that Emilio Pagan was not on the opening day roster. 
now he's your de facto closer and doing a really nice job. And, you know, we came across that stat. 3-2, there's a shot into right off the bat of Meadows, and that's going to get out of here. Line drive home run for Meadows, number 33. And the Rays pick up their sixth run of the night. So Meadows begins the ninth with that home run. Pitch up to Tommy Pham. There's some extra emotion in that dugout right now. They, they, you know they know. You know that they know the result of that Indians game, and now it's just a matter of keep your composure, keep your head, get three more outs, and then let her rip. Well, the Rays come into this game. 31 games over 500. That's the first time a Rays team has been 31 games over 500 since 2010. That's a strike two and two. So they're a day short. That was September 28th, 2010. Here we are, September 27th. 2019, and again, they're 31 over. Big cut and a miss, and Pham is out of there. Take a look at the home run by Meadows. How about the carry on this line drive? That was, And that's what it was. It was a line drive that just would not come down. A lot of juice, a lot of MPHs behind that baby. Gets out over that right field wall. Austin Meadows. We mentioned that he's enjoyed hitting here. He's enjoyed hitting against the Blue Jays staff. Continues to show that. Daniel Robertson hitting in the fourth spot. Want to know the count to him. He pops it to the right side. Foul ball and it will be playable. And McGuire made a long run to get over there. The far end of the dugout to make that catch. Two outs in the ninth inning, and now a word from Horse Soldier Bourbon Whiskey. Horse Soldier Bourbon Whiskey. Legendary spirits made by legendary men. Boy, what a September Meadows has had. That's his ninth home run in September. Zanino up here, and he takes a strike. Remember the start to the season. Mm -hmm. Led off against Justin Verlander and went opposite field, left center at Tropicana. And that kind of was a harbinger of things to come. Got off to a great start, a little bit of a lull in the middle, and having a fantastic finish. Start fast, finish strong. And that's what Meadows is doing. Cut and a miss. One and two. Yeah, that was back on March the 28th. And a 2 1 pitch off Verlander into left center field for the home run. And a wave and a miss. Zanino strikes out. Home run here by Meadows to lead off the ninth. And we go to the bottom of the ninth. Rays need three to wrap it, 6-2. Here's a look at Austin Meadows, who hit the home run in the top of the ninth inning to give the Rays a four-run lead. And as he has finished strong, the Rays in the process of doing exactly that Best September records in franchise history. Well, right now, with that 16-6 record in 
the final month. They have the best winning percentage ever in Rays history of 727 and trying to wrap this one up and earn their way into the postseason. Emilio Pagan on the hill to work the bottom of the ninth. Making his 66th appearance and he will face Rowdy Telez. 95 strikeouts as opposed to just 13 walks in 69 innings. Emilio Pagan aggressive on the mound, pounds the zone, slider, very good, but a hard fastball. There and there's is. a first pitch strike to Telez. Well, he's able to get that fastball into the zone, mid to upper 90s, a hard slider. After that, a max effort guy as far as his delivery goes. He gets everything out of it. He's fouled out of play. The other thing about him, he's been willing to take the ball as often as Kevin Cash will hand it to him. Never wants a day off. In fact, I think if he's ever down for a day, it's not because they went and asked him and he gave him the answer, yeah, I could use a day. He's never going to say that. Yep. So they tell him, you're, you're down today, our decision. Because you're right, he's a guy that answers the bell night in and night out. Rays vacate the left side of the infield here, 0-2 to Telez. Down and in, one and two, four outfielders. You could argue in shallow right, a fifth outfielder if you wanted to. Right there. I like the four and a half. <laughs> it's just a personal preference. <laughs> They're taking anything away in the air to the outfield. Better be over the fence or it's going to be caught. The one two ground ball by the mound. And how about that? The one guy on the infield and he hits it right to him. Right to him. <laughs> oh, the fifth floor. Yeah. So you take Robertson, who's playing third, you move him over to the second baseman's position, and he's positioned perfectly. <laughs> he only moved his feet just to get in position to throw. Vlad Guerrero Jr. Singled in the seventh. Now the Rays leave only Nate low. On the right side with Guerrero Jr. up there. Pitch is a strike. And Kierbeier shaded toward right center. Garcia a few steps toward the line and right. There's the infield. And they have Meadows and left. You could say straight away and actually maybe pulled a step or two toward the line. The other two outfielders shaded the other way. 2 here's that raised dugout. They're starting to gather. Hey, the roster 39 strong. And the support staff that's with them. I mean, you are going to see you know, a couple more outs here. That dugout empties. Some kind of group. Up and away. One ball, two strikes. Cleveland lost in Washington, 8-2. Rays lead this one, 6-2. And a cut and a miss, 98 up. Guerrero out on strikes, and the Rays are one out away from the postseason. Boy, how about this? I mean, max effort, top of the zone, well-placed. Best velocity of the night. One more to go. Here's Reese McGuire. 0 for 3, reached on a fielder's choice and scored on the Hernandez home run in the seventh. And Pagan trying to finish it off. Pitch is down. One ball, no strikes. Yeah, 
him and Cash calmly and quietly in the dugout. Some smiles breaking out already. That's a strike. One and one. Braves after their 96th win of the year. And the one one pitch is up and away two and one. The 08 team won 97. Make sure you get documented. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Did he go? He did not. Now it's three and one. Well, you know, that goes right back to what we were talking about earlier. You don't get a chance to do this every day, and if you can document it, as Chance Rowe is about to do, do it. Yeah, and, and you, you're getting to document it without missing out. Absolutely. You know, when you're you, three and one, and now we're going to go to three and two. You, you see some of these events where people are filming everything with their phone. Well, you're not really experiencing the event. You're just you're you're a cameraman. Right. But you get a GoPro. You're experiencing the moment all the while, taking all those pictures, getting all that footage. That is, that's fantastic. Two outs, bases empty. Three and two on McGuire. Here it is from Pagan. And he fouls it away, McGuire. And we'll do that again. Grace came in, built a 3 0 lead. Toronto came back with two in the seventh to make it 3 2. Braves right back with two in the eighth and one in the ninth on the Austin Meadows home run. Three two again. Ground ball right side low with the pickup steps on the bag and the Rays are going to the postseason. Let the celebration begin. Rays defeat Toronto six two. And this in combination with the Cleveland loss will send the Rays into the postseason here in 2019. <laughs> Kevin Cash congratulating everybody individually. And why not? His roster 39 strong, and Kevin Cash has led the Rays to the postseason. Boy, what a moment for these guys. A, a long time coming. It's been since 2013. And that was that run of four playoff appearances in six seasons. Then a little bit of a drought, but this group, I'll tell you. They've been resilient all year long and now rewarded going to the postseason. 
Well, I think about what Kevin Cash has said all along, and particularly down this stretch in this great September. He says it's all about consistent effort. And that's what we've seen from the Rays. Right now, let's go down to the field and Trisha. All right, thanks so much, Dwayne. I am here with Kevin Cash. Kevin, you guys talked about it all off season long during spring training that you wanted to build on 90 wins last year. You have done that. You have clinched a postseason burst for the first time as a manager for the Rays. What does this mean to you and the team? Wow. It's a, it's a wow factor what's taken place, especially over this last month. Uh, these guys have been tremendous all year long. Uh, we knew we had to get better. These guys found a way to get better. We were really good last year. We got better this year, and we got work to be done, but we got to enjoy this right now. There are so many things about this team that has been impressive throughout the season, but one of the things that sticks out is the resilience they have shown all season long. How impressive was their ability to overcome ups and downs, injuries, and the slew of things that came your way? Yeah, uh, very, very impressive. And, and a lot of teams deal with injuries. Uh, we can make the argument that we were right there at the top of the list with the guys we lost. The guys, they didn't lose the fight. They kept showing up. It was really encouraging. I think the other thing is the buy-in of the players. You know, we do some crazy stuff, and people had, uh, scratch their heads a lot. These guys don't care. They want to win. You guys get the postseason berth. What has to happen to get that wild card win for this team? We need Charlie Morton to pitch really, really well for us. Uh, and we got to score some runs for him. What are the celebrations going to be like tonight for you guys? You know what? It, it, uh, pretty exciting. It, it, young group. Not many guys are experiencing this. Obviously, me for the first time in this position. Uh, they all want them to really, really enjoy it. And uh, our fans back at home, thank you. Enjoy it. Our families, everybody. It's a, bi it's a big night. Thanks so much, Kevin. Congratulations. Guys, let's send it back to you upstairs. All right, thank you. And you can see right there in the clubhouse already prepped for the celebration. And why not? The Rays came in here, as we mentioned at the outset. For this weekend, there were 64 different possible combinations involving the Rays and the Indians and the A's. And this is the uh, one the Rays wanted to accomplish the first night in. And in combination with the Washington win over Cleveland, they have done exactly what they wanted to do. You're exactly right. And guess what? Now you're down to just two things that can happen. The, the Rays are going to play the A's in the wild card. Will it be at Tropicana Field? Will it be out in Oakland? And that's the only question left to be determined. A lot got handled here tonight, starting with the Rays handling their business and obviously the Nationals needing to win, handle their business against the Indians and uh, let it begin. Well, it's a special season already for these guys and you'll see over the uh, next uh, weeks how far this can carry them. Here is that final out recorded. And Pagan got it on the ground ball to Nate Lowe at first. And the celebrating began immediately. <laughs> Kevin Cash going right to his staff. First time as a manager of the Rays going to the postseason. Well, there's the breakout. The Rays 2008, what a wonderful season that turned out to be. Went to the postseason in 2010, again in 11, then in 13. And this year, the wild card, and we'll see what happens beyond this. But first things first, you have to get there. And the Rays have accomplished that here tonight on the 27th of September. Rays, five outs away from having a chance to pop some corks. He throws. Swing a ground ball to first base. Nate Lowe's got it. Runs to the bag. The remarkable Rays of 2019 are going to the postseason. And the dugout empties on the first base side, and in they come for the bullpen. A moment to be etched in Rays history forever. They're back in the postseason for the first time in six years. Wow. It's a, it's a wow factor what's taken place, especially over this last month. Uh, these guys have been tremendous all year long. Uh, we knew we had to get better. These guys found a way to get better. We were really good last year. We got better this year, and we got work to be done, but we got to enjoy this right now. Very, very impressive, and, and a lot of teams deal with injuries. Uh, we can make the argument that we were right there at the top of the list with the guys we lost. The guys, they didn't lose the fight. They kept showing up. It was really encouraging. I think the other thing is the buy-in of the players. You know, we do some crazy stuff, and people had, uh, scratch their heads a lot. These guys don't care. They want to win. <laughs> There's
There's a saying in baseball, you earn the burn. I haven't done this since 2013, my first day in the big leagues. And damn, it feels good to do it again with these guys. This is a great, great group, and we're not done yet. Oh, it's a blessing, man. All these guys welcome me with open arms. And I'm so thankful to be a Tampa Bay Ray. So thankful to all the guys I share the clubhouse with every single day. It's, it's a blessing. It's everything, man. This team is so awesome. Everyone's worked so hard this entire year. It's been so relaxed, so fun. And right now, we're just benefiting right now, baby. It's good to be back. We got a whole bunch of young guys. It's their first time, and I'm, I'm happy that they get to experience it. Um, we, this is part of our goal. It's not the ultimate goal, uh, but it's the right step in the, in the. It's a step in the right direction. It's hard to put into words. Uh, felt honored, proud, um, excited for our guys. You know, we've worked so hard, um, and uh, it's just a very humbling experience to be able to be out there for that last out. Just the chemistry. I mean, these guys, we gel so well together. It's like we've known each other our whole lives. I mean, we we we, we play for each other. Um, I think it starts from Heredia. I mean, Heredia is a, he's a fireball in here, and the kid's incredible. I mean, being around him, the joy he brings each and every day, I mean, you know, that, that's contagious. So, you know, we, we all get along really well, as you can see, and uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to keep it going. This is what we dream about, you know. We dream about coming to the big list and get to the postseason, and now we're here. But this is just the first step, you know, for us to, to keep going and try to, you know, get to the World Series. And that's where the real, the real dream come through. I'm just excited. I'm, uh, I'm excited to be, to be able to be a part of this. These guys, uh, what they did in the second half, what they did all season, it's, it's very special. And uh, it's something that I've talked about for a long time that I just want to get to the playoffs and to be able to, I mean, I had to watch for like 60 games, something like that. So a long time of watching and seeing these guys play the way they played. Uh, no, I'm just, I'm lucky to be on the team that I'm on and to be able to watch them do what they do every day, I'm very lucky. There's nothing like the playoffs. There's nothing like uh, th those moments that you experience when everything's on the line. So, you know, I, it's, I think we just got to stay where we're at. Like, I think we have to be ourselves. I don't think, you know, no pressing, no panicking. Kind of trying to enjoy it too. Bro, I was in Mexico a month ago, and I'm in the big leagues having a champagne shower because we in the playoffs. What? What? Let's go! What? Hey, this is bro, a little kid out of Compton. What? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought? Oh, this means everything. This means everything. Like. It's, it's one thing to make it to the big leagues, but it's another to go to the playoffs. It's been special. I think it's been special since day one. I just want to thank the, the Tampa organization for the opportunity, front office, manager, everybody included. I think it's a, a special group. It's rewarding. Um, and not just to the front office, but our scouts. You know, Blake Snell's been in this organization a long time. and. Um, it's just all the way through. It's, it, there are a lot of people that have touched this roster that have had their fingerprints on it. You know, we've got a staff of 200. They've all somehow, some way, touched this group and influenced them. And we've had 500, 557 players. I, I might have had a drink. Uh, 57 players that have impacted this roster this year, and that doesn't happen without uh, a huge effort from our from our staff. It extends well beyond the front office.